for those of you that know me and know me well, you know that I only know one way to preach, and that's to preach from my heart about personal experiences and to preach about things that the Lord laid on my heart to preach. Uh, Reggie told me last Sunday, I was down there showing him the new building, he said, Philip, I like the way you preach because you redneck it down where we can understand it. <laughs> I said, thank you, Reggie, for that compliment. And uh, guys, that's the only way I know to do it. It's the only way I know to do it. Um, in fact, you know, what's the point of me preaching if you don't understand what I'm preaching? Amen? Amen. Well, in this week's message, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. And in fact, I'm going to preach about a topic this week that is so personal to me that I'm not going to make you any promises as to whether I can get through it without shedding tears. I firmly believe that this message is not only applicable to what I've experienced this week, but I believe with all my heart that it has application for every single one of us in this room today. The title of my message today is Dealing with Pain. Dealing with Pain. This past nine days has been one of the most pain-filled nine days of my entire life. Now I want to tell you up front, the particular pain that I went through is not important to the message, so don't try to sit there and figure out what's going on in the preacher's life. The specifics about what I went through this week are not important. I'm just going to say this, I've experienced physical and emotional pain this week in ways that no single person knows about, not even my wife and my kids and my mom and dad. But I don't believe for a minute that I'm the only person in this boat. I believe if the truth were told that every single one of us in this building, whether now or some other time in our life, we've dealt with physical and emotional pain that absolutely ripped us to shreds. And nobody around us had a clue what we were going through. Nobody around us had a clue. We felt all alone. We felt unloved and abandoned. We were at the end of our rope, and we wondered whether anybody cared or not if we let go of the rope. We felt overwhelmed by the tremendous stress, and we'd been willing to sell anything and everything we had just to get some relief. That's where I was this week, and I know that's where some of you have been because you've texted me and you've asked me to pray for you this week, and I believe with all my heart that every single one of us at some point or another in our lives have been there. Your life is filled with pain. And you do anything just to get some relief. So here's what I did, church. For those of you who've been at Yellow Creek before, I've said this a hundred times, but it bears me repeating. And hopefully it will show you that this preacher don't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. I firmly believe that the answers to all life's questions are found in the holy, infallible, 100% accurate, 100% true, 100% reliable, 100% of the time, inerrant, Holy Word of God, the Bible. Amen. So I commenced to look in my Bible for the answer to the question, God, how do I deal with this pain? How do I deal with this pain? And in my study this week, I found that the word pain is mentioned a little over 30 times in the Scriptures. And as I read each one of those 30 plus Scriptures, I was drawn to a particular passage in the book of Psalms that gives us a really good outline on how to deal with pain. So would you turn with me in your copy of God's Word to Psalm 25. Psalm 25, and we're going to start reading today at verse 1. Psalms 25 was written by King David. And many scholars believe that King David wrote this toward the end of his life in church. King David would know a thing or two about dealing with pain, wouldn't he? He suffered the pain of having many people try to take his life. He suffered the pain of losing a child to death. King David suffered the pain of losing his best friend Jonathan to death. King David suffered pain because of his sins. He suffered pain from disappointments. And now here he is... At the end of his life, and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, King David writes Psalms 25, which gives us a real good outline for how to deal with the pain that we're experiencing today. If you're in Psalm 25, verse 1, and you're ready to go, say amen. 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 If you don't have your Bible, you can follow along with us on the screen. <laughs> Unto thee, O God, do I lift up my soul. 
O oh my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on Thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me Thy ways, O oh Lord. Teach me Thy paths. <laughs> Lead me in Thy truth. And teach me, for Thou art the God of my salvation. On Thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O oh Lord, Thy tender mercies and Thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember, remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgression according to Thy mercy. Remember Thou me for Thy goodness' sake, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will He teach sinners in the way. The meek will He guide in judgment, and the meek will He teach His way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. For Thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord was with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Verse 18, Look upon my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Would you pray with me, church? Heavenly Father, I already see tears in the eyes of several in this message right now in this congregation. Lord, I believe you've got a special work you're going to do through this message today, just like you did in first service. And may the words from my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray that you'll not only help us to deal with our pain, but I pray that you'll save the person in this room that's nearest to an eternity filled with pain and hell. Help them to turn from their wicked ways today and turn from their sin and accept you as Lord and Savior. We ask this in your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Now. Amen. Amen. Now, I hope most of you picked up the orange outline when you came through today so you can take notes on how to deal with pain. And if you did pick it up, fill in the blank there at step number one with how to deal with pain. Step number one, Look to God for help. Look to God for help. Go back with me and reread verse 1 of chapter 25. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Verse 15, I didn't have it on the screen, but it says, My eyes are ever toward the Lord. We're to look to God for help. And it's not just here in Psalms 25 that we can find the command to look to God for the answer. Look at Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, there is none else. Micah 7, 7. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. Hebrews 12, 12. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. My friends, step number one for dealing with pain. And if you mess this step up, nothing else will work. Step number one is to look to God for help. Look to God for help. There's many people in our world today who mess up on step number one. Instead of looking to God to help them with their pain, they look to alcohol to help them. Instead of looking to God to help with their pain, they turn to marijuana, cocaine, meth, or other illegal drugs. Instead of looking to God to help with their pain, they turn to abusing prescription drugs. And before you know it, they're 10 days into a 30-day supply of meds and they're plumb out of medicine. Instead of looking to God to help with their pain, some people turn to food and binge eat. Instead of looking to God to help with their pain, some people turn to shopping and spend money like it's burning a hole in their pockets. Instead of looking to God to help with their pain. Some people turn to illicit sex and inappropriate relationships in order to numb the pain of being lonely and seemingly unlovable. My friends, we've got to realize right off the bat, none of that's going to work. Amen. Ain't none of that going to work. None of these vices will help you truly deal with the pain. Eventually, the alcohol is going to wear off. Eventually, the drugs are going to wear off and you're going to come down off the high. <laughs> Eventually, you'll run out of money and you won't have nothing else to spend. And eventually, you're right back where you were to begin with. 
and the pain is still there. But when we look to God, we can know for a surety that the answer is on the way. Now, it may be an answer that helps us remove that pain once and for all, or it may simply be the grace to deal with that pain like He gave the Apostle Paul with the thorn in his flesh. Either way, step number one to dealing with pain is to look to God and God alone for the help. So some of you, I see the look on your faces now, you're saying, well, how do you look to God for help? Well, there's three things you need to do. I've covered all these in messages before, but we've got some new folks here today, and everybody needs to be reminded of this. Three ways that you look to God. Prayer, reading His Word, and fasting. Prayer, reading His Word, and fasting. Now, most of all of us pray because prayer is our lifeline to the Father. But in addition to praying, church, to properly look to God for help in dealing with your pain, we also need to be reading His Word each and every single day. There's a reason that this Word right here is called the Holy Word of God. It's because when you read these words, they will speak to you and give you instructions for how to live your life. When people come up to me and say, Brother Philip, I need some help with this or pray for me for this, one of the first questions I'll ask them, are you reading your Bible every day? What? Yeah, man, are you reading your Bible every day? You want to know why I ask them if they're reading their Bible every day? Because first things first. And if you're not praying and reading God's Word every day, then what could Brother Philip ever say that'd be more important than what the Word of God says? Thirdly, we need to look to God through fasting. If you want to get really serious, really deep, and remove all the distractions from your life so you can really hone in on what the Lord's telling you to do. Then, my friend, you need to fast. Now listen, we are a fasting church here at Yellow Creek. We've got several people here today that were not here at the beginning of this year. At the beginning of each year, we fast for 21 days to dedicate our year to the Lord. Do you think it's any coincidence that now, with what happened this morning, we've had over 90 people saved here at Yellow Creek Baptist Church this year. Is it any coincidence since we fasted 21 days and dedicated our year to the Lord? Is it any coincidence that last year before our revival, we fasted 21 days before the revival and we had 21 people to get saved? Amen. We're going to fast 21 days before the revival that's coming up in November. Guys, fasting really, really, really works. So I fasted earlier this week. And it really helped me to focus on God and to clear my mind and receive the leadership of the Holy Spirit as to what I needed to do next in order to deal with my pain. Fasting helps us focus on God by us giving up something that's important to us. For me, it was food. So instead of eating this past Wednesday while all of y'all were eating here for church Wednesday night, I took that time that I would normally eat and I focused on God. Every time I felt hungry, I prayed to God. And it was during that period of fasting on Wednesday that I started to see little breakthroughs. Not big breakthroughs, little breakthroughs. On the pain I was dealing with. Fasting shows God that we mean business. And over and over and over and over again in my life, I can give you example after example after example of how God has answered me through prayer, through reading His Word, and through fasting. Step number one, dealing with the pain, is to look to God. And how do we look to God? Through prayer, through reading His Word, and through fasting. That brings us to step number two, dealing with our pain. Step number two on your outline, trust God. Trust God. Not only must we look to God for help, but we must trust that He will help us, that He can help us. See, you can look to God and you can never trust that He'll answer. You can look to God and never trust that it's going to work. So not only must we look to God for help, we must trust that He can and He will help us. Go back with me and look at verse 2 of Psalms 25. O oh God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Psalms 25 verse 20. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. We're also told in many other scriptures, church, to trust God. 2 Samuel 22.3 The God of my rock, in Him will I trust. 
He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in Thee do I put my trust. Psalms 20, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalms 56, in God I will praise His word. In God I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Psalms 141, but my eyes are unto thee, O God the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Proverbs 30, verse 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. My friend, are you getting the message loud and clear? Not only is it critically important, number one, that we look to God for help, but it's also step number two, we must trust that God can and will help us. I never ever cease to be amazed at the things people will trust before they trust God. We'll trust what Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, and Oprah Winfrey have to say before we'll trust in God. We'll trust what somebody on Facebook has to tell us before we'll trust what God has to tell us. We'll trust what some website we've never seen before and don't know who did it. We'll trust what that website says before we'll trust what God says. We'll trust what the girl that works next to us was told by her mother's cousins, wife's sisters, daughters, uncles, stepfather's firefighting buddy before we'll trust what God tells us. Now, you know I'm telling the truth. Man, that's crazy. Yep. My friends, we put our trust in things all the time. We trust that when we flip the light switch off, the lights will go off. When we flip the light switch on, the lights will come on. <laughs> we trust that when we finally get the green light at the intersection to go, that all the other lights are red. We trust that the pharmacist give us the right medicine, the same medicine that the doctor ordered. We trust that the medicine is really going to do what the doctor said it's going to do. We trust that the food we're eating is safe to eat. We trust that the water we're drinking is safe to drink. We trust that the car we're driving is safe to drive. We trust that the plane we're flying is safe to fly. Friend, if we trust in all that each and every single day, give me one good reason why we can't trust the almighty, all-knowing, ever-reaching, everlasting creator of the universe to help us deal with our pain. Amen. Give me one example of how God's ever let you down. Give me one example of how God's ever let anybody down. He's never let anybody down in times past. He never will for all to eternity to come. In church, we can and we must confidently and fully place our trust in God to help us deal with our pain. Step number one, to dealing with pain, look to God for help. Step number two, trust God. Step number three, with dealing with pain. Follow God's leadership and do what He tells you to do. Follow God's leadership and do what He tells you to do. Look back at Psalms 25, verse 4 and 5. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. The Apostle Paul talked about following God as well in Ephesians chapter 5. Look on the screen at verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. The Apostle John talked about following God in 3 John chapter 1. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Now church, if step number one dealing with pain is to look to God, and step number two is to trust in God, then it's only logical that step number three would be to follow what He tells you to do with the pain. What good does it do to look to God and to trust God if we don't actually take that step forward and follow His instructions? That's like going to the doctor. Trusting that what the doctor told you is true. Trusting that the medicine is going to work. And then you don't take the medicine that they give you to take. When did you get a $100,000 medical school degree? What made you smarter than the doctor? Man, that's crazy. My friends, God will never lead you down the wrong path. Psalms 25, verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. The 23rd Psalm that we quote at every funeral we've ever gone to. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. God and God alone will lead us down the only path that will truly help us with our pain. Amen. Now I'm going to be the first one to tell you. 
Sometimes, many times, the path He leads us down don't make a bit of sense to us. There's been many times I've questioned God. I said, God, why in the world am I doing this? Why are you taking me down this path? But we must trust and believe that God always has a purpose. God always has a plan. And all His promises are always true, including John, the promise that He promises in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord who are the called according to His purpose. All things, that includes the pain you're going through right now. All things, that includes the path that the Lord's leading you down. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them are the called according to His purpose. Now look, sometimes God will want you to make the first move, but sometimes He's going to tell you to be still. Sometimes He's going to say, wait just a second. And sometimes He's going to say, hey, let's go. Whichever way He tells you to go doesn't matter. What matters is that we follow His leadership and go down the path He leads us because we can take it to heart. The path He leads us is the right path. It's the true path. It's the path of integrity. It's the path of righteousness. It's the path of mercy. And it will be the only path that will help us truly deal with our pain. And that should lead us to do step number four, praise Him. Step number four is praise Him. Step number four for dealing with the pain Praise Him. Right here in the middle of Psalms 25, David breaks out into spontaneous praise at the end of verse 5 when he declares, Thou art the God of my salvation. Likewise, church, he does it in verse 7 when he says the Lord is merciful and good. He declares the Lord is good and upright in verse 8. And church, in the middle of mine and your pain, as we're focused on God, as we're trusting Him, as we're following His leadership down the path that He wants us to go, we must have an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of praise, knowing that He's going to help us. The Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of His people. And over and over in Scripture, we're admonished to praise God. Look on the screen at 1 Chronicles 29, 13. Now therefore, our God, we thank Thee and praise Thy glorious name. Psalms 44, 8. In God we boast all the day long and praise Thy name forever. Psalms 96, 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Isaiah 25, verse 1, O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Now church, I'm going to be the first one to admit right here. When you're in the middle of that pain-filled situation, praising God's hard to do. It's hard. Our natural instinct is to gripe and to complain and to bellyache about our circumstances. But this week, as I plow through those painful situations I was facing, I tried my best to praise God, to praise Him for the innumerable blessings He's given me in my past. I praised Him for being good and knowing what was best for me and for the people that I love. I praised Him that although I felt all alone, I could take heart that He would never leave me nor forsake me. I praised Him that although there was no one I could talk to about my pain, I could always talk to Him. And I praised Him for the future blessing that He promised me, hallelujah, of a pain-free life in heaven forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Church is... You praise God with an attitude of gratitude. Step number five, we must also ask God to forgive us for the sins we've committed. Step number five, dealing with pain, ask for forgiveness. Look what David did in Psalms 25, 11. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Right smack dab in the middle of looking to God, in the middle of trusting God, in the middle of following God, in the middle of praising God, David stopped and he asked God to forgive his many sins and iniquities. And likewise, church, you and I need to do the same. We need to stop what we're doing and we need to ask God to forgive us of our sins. Now, I want to call a quick time out here. I want to make sure you get this next point. If you're listening to me, say we're listening. Our sins may not be the reason we're experiencing the pain we're feeling right now. 
I want, I want you to get that good. Our sins may have nothing to do with the pain that we're experiencing right now. But that does not remove the fact that the Bible says every single one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And our unrepentant, unforgiven sins hinder our fellowship with Holy Lord God Almighty. And He's the only one that can help us deal with the pain. Amen. Church, the Lord gave me a hard word for somebody here at Yellow Creek today. He did not tell me who it was for, but He gave me this word and He told me to deliver the message. When is the last time you humbled yourself before Holy God Almighty and confessed your sins to Him? When is the last time you prayed and instead of giving God your to-do list of everything you needed to do, you said, Dear Lord, I want you to know how sorry I am for... Dear Lord, please forgive me for... Dear God, I feel so bad for doing... Now most of us don't blink an eye when it comes to praying and giving God our to-do list. And there's a lot of us that will be careful to praise God for the many blessings He's bestowed upon us. But there's for everybody in this room, everybody listening to me on the radio right now, stop and examine your hearts. How many of us in this room have humbled ourselves before the Holy Lord God Almighty, Creator of the universe, and confessed our sins to Him and begged Him for forgiveness. 1 Peter chapter 1 says, But as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Step number five in dealing with our pain is to ask for forgiveness and to humble ourselves in holiness before the Holy Lord God Almighty of the universe. Now listen, our sins may or may not have caused the pain we're dealing with, but regardless, that does not remove the fact that we're all sinners and our sin is what hinders our fellowship with the only one that can help us deal with the pain. Right. That brings me to the last step in dealing with the pain. Fear God. Fear God. Psalms 25, 12, What is man that he feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Now, Y'all know I preach out of the King James Version. In the King James, the word fear oftentimes can be used interchangeably with the word respect. In other words, what man is he that respects the Lord? And as with all these other five steps, we're reminded all over the Bible, not just here in Psalms 25, to fear or to respect the Lord. Look at 1 Chronicles 16, 25. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared or respected above all gods. Proverbs 9.10 The fear or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is His understanding. Isaiah 50.10 Who is among you that feareth or respects the Lord that obeyeth the voice of His servant that walketh in darkness and hath no light let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Now church, why is it important for us to fear or respect God? Because although we may not agree with everything He's doing Although we may not agree with where He's leading us, we've got to respect the fact that He's God. He knows everything. He knows how all these pieces of this puzzle we call life fit together. He knows what's best for us. He has an eternal plan. He has an eternal purpose. And the quicker we learn to respect that fact, the quicker we'll be able to deal with our pain and move forward in life. Now guys, pain in life is on a board. A lot of us think the, we make the mistake of thinking that once we give our hearts to Christ, we're going to have a pain-free life for all of our years left here on earth. There could be nothing further from the truth. Pain is absolutely unavoidable. It is going to happen to you. It happened to Jesus. It happened to every single one of the disciples. It happened to the Apostle Paul. And pain is going to happen to you. The question is not how do I avoid pain. The question is how do you deal with it? And I'm proud to tell you today from experience this week that if you'll follow these six steps I preached about today, look to God for help, trust God, follow God's leadership, praise Him, ask for forgiveness and fear Him. If you'll do those six things, God will help you deal with the pain you're experiencing just like He helped me this week. 
Now, can I give you some more good news? Good news number one, this is the end of my message. That will make everyone of you happy. <laughs> number two, even better than that. Although God did not promise us a pain-free life here on earth, if we give our hearts to Him and ask Him to forgive us of our sins, He has promised us a pain-free life for eternity in heaven. Amen. We sung about it earlier today. Look on the screen at the Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I cannot even imagine this church a life free from stress. A life free from everything that's ever made you want to cry. A life free from death. A life free from sorrow. A life free from pain. Forever? My goodness, how wonderful heaven's going to be. And I don't know about you folks, but I can't wait to get there. Every bit of pain I deal with here on earth makes heaven that much sweeter to me. But if you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, if you haven't asked the Holy Lord God Almighty, Creator of the universe, to forgive you of your sins, then you're doomed for an eternity of pain. An eternity of pain. That's far worse than any pain you've ever experienced here on earth. An eternity in hell where you're going to be in pain because of the heat. An eternity in hell where you're going to be in pain because of the burning flames. An eternity in hell where you're going to be in pain because of the awful sulfur smell. Because of the chains that have you bound. Because of the worms that will continually be eating at your body. Give me one good reason why you would choose a pain-filled eternity instead of a pain-free eternity. I don't know why anybody would choose a pain-filled eternity when we can have a pain-free eternity. If you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ and asked Him to forgive you of your sins, I want to invite you to do that here today just like two people did in the first service. And not only will you get to enjoy that pain-free eternity forever, but you're going to get a friend that's going to help you deal with all the pain you're going to face for the rest of your life here on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, no doubt this was your message for your people today. And I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice took to heart your instructions for dealing with pain. Look to you for help. Trust that you're going to work it out. Follow your leadership. Praise you. I pray, Lord, that everybody under the sound of my voice will ask for forgiveness and that they will fear or respect you. And Lord, whatever painful situation they're dealing with, just like you helped me deal with mine this week, you'll help them deal with theirs if they'll follow these six steps. And Father God, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that's never accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that right now your Holy Spirit will begin to work on them and they'll realize that unless they accept you as Savior, they're doomed for a pain-filled eternity. But that you've made a way for them to have a pain-free eternity. And I pray that they'll accept that way right now. Have your perfect work right now. Holy Spirit, do your work. 